I don't know how many of you saw the film The Octopus Teacher on Netflix. It came out in 2020, right around that time most of us believed to be the height of the pandemic. And many viewers described it as a feel-good, otherworldly escape from an otherwise horrific year. But that gave Harvard scholars an opportunity to get together and talk about why it was such a hit. Scholars will talk about anything. And imagine their academic and intellectual realization then that it was a deep emotional impact that made it so popular. Not just feel-good escapism, but feel-good connection and relationship. The story chronicles Craig Foster, a burned out photographer and naturalist suffering from depression, who decides that to recharge and reconnect with himself and his own family, he would start free diving near his home. On one of his dives, he encounters an octopus that fascinates him, and he wonders what would happen if he went back every day. And it appears throughout the film that Foster and this octopus form a relationship. In an interview with Time Magazine, he says, she taught me humility, she taught me compassion, she opened my mind to just how complex and precious wild creatures are. How could he learn so much from an animal, an octopus at that? And I won't give away too much from the film, but suffice it to say that they go through the stages of forming a bond, of storming with fear or anxiety, of norming with the repeated visits, and then performing a sort of relationship together. It was really fascinating to watch, and I highly recommend it. It's not just a documentary about the ocean, although it would be a good one of those. It's a film about getting up close and personal with the wonders of the planet in order to better understand ourselves in the order of things. Now, Foster was fortunate enough to have an ocean at his doorstep, but he also insists that wildlife teachers can be found everywhere, even in the middle of the city. Consider his claim that if you took one tree in New York City and figured out how that tree changed over 365 days and what animals interacted with it and the insects that live there, how that tree was surviving, I think that could have quite a large impact on your life. For Foster, intimacy and connection with nature offers true transformation. And no one, none of us, should go without connection and transformation. There's no excuse, just look around and breathe in. He says, we are totally reliant on the natural system for every single breath, for every mouthful of food we put in our stomachs. We are woven of the same thread. We are made of the same stuff. If the natural system suffers, we suffer. Interdependence, friends. That's our seventh principle embodied. We are made of the same suffering stuff. And I would like to think we're also made of the same celebratory stuff. One of Foster's documentary writers, Pippa Ehrlich, hopes the film reminds viewers that the connection with nature is more than consumption or entertainment. Every single breath that you breathe into your lungs, I'm sorry, every second breath that you breathe into your lungs comes from oxygen that's created by our oceans. Can you believe that? There's so much life in our oceans that every second breath is dependent on them. We're connected to creatures and living things from the deepest depths of the ocean to the highest peaks on our planet. We are interdependent in this web of life. Ehrlich also spoke about making the film as one of the most reassuring and fulfilling things that she could have done with her time. 
She says that nurturing a relationship with the wild makes you think very differently about how you consume natural resources. It makes you think carefully about what an incredible natural system is giving to us and what we can do in return. In terms of having a more reciprocal, respectful, even reverential relationship with the living planet. And sometimes it's easier to learn certain lessons from animals and nature than it is from people. I could stand here and list endangered species or even talk about how there's scientific proof that a relationship with a pet can actively calm your nervous system. But you won't believe any of that, really and truly, until you feel it somehow until it impacts you and your life, until it touches you in some way, or you allow it to touch you and your life. It's easy to stay disconnected and keep up the illusion of independence. Who here has volunteered at an animal shelter before? Nice. I just signed up at my local shelter and I got an email back from them with some volunteer orientations coming up. I want to connect. I want to feel relationship. I want to transform myself through an act of love and justice, really. But more importantly, I want to get intimate with the interdependent web of existence of which we are a part. It's not just about walking dogs and holding rabbits. What if they could teach me something, like the octopus teacher did? Humility, compassion, complexity. We may think we are independent from our pets, the ones in charge. Cat people know better, right? <laughs> Notice I didn't say cat owners. Cat people know that humans only play and pretend at being in charge. It makes us feel powerful at times, and it can make us feel good to take care of something that cannot care for itself. But really, we care for each other, the pets and us. It's reciprocal. It goes both ways. And now I see that none of you, I don't think anyone has brought an octopus today to be blessed. So I brought my own. There's a stuffed octopus on this table up here. And that's, that's my octopus because I actually had a dream a couple of months ago about an octopus. And it really impacted me. It was so strange and bizarre. I felt deeply connected to this creature. It ended up on the side of my head for some reason. And it felt like we were communicating without any language or gesture, just telepathically. It was so interesting, it was so fascinating, it was a great dream, one of those that you have to wake up and write down and then tell all your friends just to get their interpretations of what it means. And I've been thinking about it ever since. And after I got that stuffed, afterwards I got that stuffed octopus to kind of honor that relationship that was formed during the dream. I wanted to remind myself of this creature who had, in my opinion, visited me for the night. I practice shamanism, which honors the lessons that all of creation has to teach us. And after that dream, I was able to think about how the octopus changing its colors and textures to blend in might have something to teach me. I thought about the mysterious creature being like water in a way, moving and shifting with ease and grace. I thought about its giant nine-brained head, nine head, its eight arms, its three hearts, and its two unblinking eyes. What could I learn? Perhaps to reach out more, imagining that I do have eight arms in that capacity? What could I glean from its wisdom? Maybe knowing when to blend in and knowing when to move along. What is the blessing? 
simply being connected to this magical creature. I'm still discerning the messages and sorting through what I think was communicated to me in that dream. And I'm delighted to be pondering such a beautiful relationship with the depths of the oceans and the mysteries of creation. I hope you enjoyed that poem from this morning by Maria Popova. Thank you, Matt, for reading it so artfully. There at the bottom of being where the water that makes this planet a world is the color of space-time, the octopus. And then later, meanwhile, up here, we swim amid particles we cannot perceive, folded into dimensions we cannot imagine, to tell stories about what is real and what is possible and what it means to be. What can we learn from our animal companions on this planet? What stories will we tell about our relationship, connection, and transformation? What can we glean from their wisdom? How might they be blessing us with a deep and mysterious reminder of our interdependent web of existence? May we, like the poet and the 19th century explorer, conclude that everything that is possible is real. Let us give thanks for the very real blessings from our animals this day. Blessed be, may it be so, and amen. <laughs>